KZN Future 50, powered by FNB Business and East Coast Radio, is up next. Stay tuned as we spotlight an unstoppable business shaping our future's province. They say it's just business, but it's so much more for us as Mzanzi businesses. It's about showing up every day on every street corner, B&B, barbershop, farm, franchise, and manufacturer. Because giving up is just not an option. It's about the comfort we, as over one million unstoppable businesses, feel from having F&B business behind us. They help us stay unstoppable. Help changes everything. Global Finance 2024 Best SME Bank in South Africa. F&B, a division of First Rand Bank Limited, an authorized FSP and credit provider. The KZN Future 50 with Pavlo Fatidis, inspiring KZN's business future. It is time for KZN Future 50 and of course for that we have Pavlo Fatidis from Auric. Good morning, Pavlo. Good morning, Carmen. So tell us, Pavlo, which business will you be featuring today and why did you pick them? Well, we're going to be featuring a business founded by Sunil Hiraman from Classic Plastics, which he started 17 years ago. And today, it manufactures plastic packaging used mainly in business and in households. So if we think within our homes, you know when you have a braai on the weekends and you run to the garage shop to get packets of ice. He makes those ice bags. For those of us who are lucky to buy new mattresses, you know, something that occurs once every 10, 20 years, they come wrapped in these enormous plastic protective bags. He makes those. He makes refuse bags. He makes plastic tubes that are used to wrap things together. For example, when you manufacture certain products, you will put them into protective plastic, type the one and type the other end and send it off to the retail store. So he has a plant that manufactures factures all of that and he's been in this game for a long long time. So what makes them special enough to be on the KZN Future 50? Well we can all get lessons from Sunil and it's the way he started his business and for any youngsters out there looking to start a business or in fact anybody looking to start a business let's take some lessons from this. He started first by trading. Trading is where you're buying and selling the goods or services between individuals and businesses that make up the industry you're in. He was a middleman or a wholesaler. He bought plastic packaging. He sold it onto business. He sold it onto consumers. What it does is it helps you understand the industry. It helps you understand the product. It helps you understand your customers and it helps you build relationships. Once you've got that, once you have got those relationships and customers, the next opportunity is to then start manufacturing the product as opposed to buying it from other manufacturers. And that's what he did. He had his customers on board. He raised some funding, invested in his first machine. And today he's got seven different extruders, which makes it a fairly big plant and he manufactures the product that he now sells. In doing so, he earned more profitability, he earned more capability and he was able to respond to customers more effectively and more adaptively. It's a really good way to start. Don't start by going manufacturing first. Start by trading to learn the market and then build backwards into the manufacturing side. Great lesson for us all. So Pavlo, tell us, where will classic plastics be in five years' time? Well, look, you know, today, Carmen, it's a fairly substantial business. Sunil has achieved remarkably well. And he has the problem, because he has done well, and because he has got the business pitched right, he has more customers than he has an ability to service and supply. His manufacturing output is choking. And in order to solve that problem, he needs two things, a bigger premises. When you set up a manufacturing plant, you start with one or two pieces of machinery. He's now up to five, six, seven pieces of machinery on the same piece of land and factory premises that he had. He needs bigger premises. Those premises need very easy access to logistics, so to main arterials, main highways, main motorways. And then secondly, important, important, critical, vital. He needs access to reliable, consistent quantity electricity. He needs new machines. They need space. And that will open up a new market for him. That piece of land must either be bought so he can build a factory to spec or it must be a warehouse that he can buy or hire with a view to buy it later. The power supply of 800 amps is key key key. That piece of land with reliable power will generate upwards of another 120 jobs. Well speaking of classic plastics needs, what can KZN do to support classic plastics? Well I'm hoping property owners or landowners looking to do a deal on listening. It will create substantial employment and localize economic opportunities. Also, KZN government officials, whenever a new factory is established, Carmen, 
I really believe that government could go and launch it. We should have ribbon cutting ceremonies. Yes. Let's celebrate the commissioning of our factories. Let's celebrate our manufacturing environment because that creates long term sustainable jobs and it concentrates opportunity, economic opportunity within KZN itself. So I'm really hearing government has this. I hope property owners hear it. Visit ECR, get Sir Neil's de- t- details, tell him what you've got available. He's a great deal maker and I'm no doubt we'll be able to then collectively get this business to its next level. Wonderful. Pavlo Fitsidis from Oric joining us this morning for KZN Future 50. Thank you so much for joining us, Pavlo. And if you want to get involved, like Pavlo said, in the KZN Future 50, go to ecr.co.za and you can find all the information on any of the companies that we feature.